fine. And this is the fear of heights coming in. Oh, yeah, okay, this is cool. We face our fears and climb to new heights at the ultimate rock climbing spot. Plus, a fresh twist on a classic children's tale. It's a beautiful day, we're on our way. Taking the slow to the town down the road. It's a the small play that packs a powerful message. And... I can really smell it right now. Refined chows down on the smelliest, but tastiest cake in town. Seattle Refined starts now. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Seattle Refined. I'm Garth Swanson, and what a day here in Seattle. You know, it's no secret that Seattle has a huge climbing community, but the weather doesn't always cooperate to be outside. Luckily, there are tons of indoor rock wall spots to get your vertical fix. But in our opinion, one place in Redmond really stands out from the rest. Refine's Brandon Bernstead hopped in a new Toyota 4Runner to check it out. Thanks to our sponsor, Western Washington Toyota Dealers. So, without further ado, let's go places. For this Toyota adventure, I went outside my comfort zone. That's why I needed a trustworthy ride. One that screams durability, but looks amazing on the road. The Toyota 4Runner never disappoints, inside and out boasting fold-flat second-row seats and the multi-terrain select system so it can handle even the toughest trails. I can't get enough of this 4Runner. It is super fun to drive and extremely functional. I headed to Redmond to try something new. Indoor climbing at Vertical World, America's first climbing gym. They opened their original Seattle location back in 1987 and this facility in 1992. The sport has become one that is less outdoor climbers looking for a place to climb inside, uh, and people start their climbing career in a climbing gym. The problem solving side of, of climbing, um, I think that mental component uh, is what really gets people hooked. But if you're comfortable. Matt Denton is the manager of Vertical World Redmond. He works with first timers every day, so he's the perfect person to show me the ropes. This is our bouldering area. Um, bouldering is where you know the vast majority of new climbers um, get started because there's no technical knowledge that they need to have. Basically all you're going to do is start by starting on the pink hold and then you just work your hands up the sequence of these bigger holds. Ooh. With Matt's help I conquer a couple beginner level bouldering problems. All right. Nicely done. But I've got my sights set on something just a little taller. All right, well, let's get you in the harness. Let's do it. On this climb, right. I'm roped in, what they call on belay. Matt is my belayer, managing the slack of my rope. If I fall, he's got me. All right, Matt, how tall is this wall I'm about to climb up? This wall's about mm, 25 feet tall. Let's, uh, let's make it happen. Great, go for it whenever you're ready. Climb it. Climb on. As it turns out, going up the wall isn't the hardest part. All right, so <laughs> I'm gonna grab my rope. Yep. And lean With back. both hands and just lean back. For me, it's getting back down. Well, this is weird. And this is a recurring theme. So, uh, these are called auto belays. The thing that always gets people the first time is that unlike a belayer where I can make it really tight, um, there's no sensation of it ever getting tight. <laughs> so, but there is a definite trust fall moment on these where you have to just let go. So I'm gonna trust the machine and make it happen. This is a trust the machine moment. Well, here goes nothing. Oh, this is interesting now. You've got some footholds down by your right knee. It's right there. Now bring that right hand in. Nicely done. Victory. There you go. Now you got the fun part. Thanks to Matt's coaching, I make it to the top. Now if only I can learn to trust the machine. You basically have to simultaneously let go with both hands and then grab that strap. Is that gonna catch me? That thing will load as soon as you weight it, but you gotta fully weight it. And this is the fear of heights coming in. There it is. Oh, yeah, okay, this is cool. There you go, and feet under you. But, uh, there you go, <laughs> nicely done. The hardest part was getting down. And that wraps up another fun-filled, adrenaline-packed Toyota adventure. To learn more about the 4Runner TRD Off-Road Premium, head to buyatoyota.com. From climbing to skiing, if you're hitting the slopes this winter, make sure you do it in style.
We have a photo gallery on SeattleRefine.com right now that is a perfect fit for all of you snow bunnies out there. Our refined fashion writer compiled a list of 21 examples that show snow gear can be super trendy. From beanies to boots to jumpsuits, it's all there. All you have to do is check it out and head to our website. We love covering all things theater on Refined, and every once in a while, we stumble upon a show that's much more than just a play. Thanks to our sponsor, AAA, there's now a twist on a very popular children's story to drive home a powerful message. Chug, chug, up, up, chug, chug, up, up. songs, fun characters, and an important message. It's a beautiful day, we're on our way. It's a fresh take on the classic children's tale, The Little Engine That Could. I wonder what my family will be like. I wonder if the kids are big or small. Triple A's Jennifer Cook says it's a wonderful way to get the word out about the dangers of not paying attention when behind the wheel. Triple A is founded in traffic safety, and right now, the number two reason why people are getting into fatality collisions is because of distracted driving. And the new train is coming. We really wanted to do something around distracted driving for our youngest people so that they can be the carriers of the message to their parents. And so what a great way to partner and get that message out is with Storybook Theater. The fact that the Storybook Theater writes and performs shows filled with music, laughter, and life lessons for kids at their schools made them the perfect partner. People with the best intentions can be right for them but wrong for you in the original story a small engine pulls a large train over a hill with the mantra i think i can the updated version tackles a different issue distracted driving okay everybody ready i talked to my friend well she mostly just talked to me she tends to do that <laughs> anyway i'm all set we just gotta get your cars hooked up to my engine well, I Actually, my friends here need to tell you something. We really appreciate you helping us. But we don't feel safe when you talk and drive at the same time. But we're grateful for your offer to help. And... Thank you. Thank you. Bonnie Brockman wrote the script, focusing on some common scenarios. They each were distracted either by um, using their cell phone or um, partying with their um, uh, passengers in the back seat or by trying to find their lipstick. The toys and the engines were able to um, very assertively say thank you for volunteering your help, but um, no thank you, we don't feel comfortable driving with you. It's kind of you to offer, and while that may be true, we say thank you, thank you. but no thank you. No, thank you. We'll make another choice, a better choice for us right now. Thank you. Helping kids find their voice when it comes to distracted driving is their goal. So our children is what is most important to our parents, right? So if the message is coming from the child asking the parent not to drive distracted, how powerful is that? And it really gives them a voice. So we are super excited um, to see how this all works. Because what it takes to be a family is caring, sharing, and love. And love. To learn more about this show, head to SeattleRefine.com. Seattle Refine is just getting started. They say if it tastes like heaven, smells like hell. <laughs> How can something that smells so bad make something that tastes so good? The stinky dessert that really takes the cake. Plus, you know, Seattle's a pretty cool place. Refine gets to know one of the new kids on the block at Como News. We'll be right back. to Refined, I'm Guard Swanson. You have been warned. This is an early heads up that this Sunday is National Chocolate Cake Day. And if you need suggestions on where to celebrate, we have you covered. Just head to SeattleRefined.com and search chocolate. There you'll find an article that lists the best Seattle shops to indulge on chocolate cake and much more. The list even includes something called the Death Cake, which is for serious chocoholics. Happy eating, everybody. This next cake sounds a little less appealing, but people swear by it, especially in Asia. Some call it the corpse cake because one key ingredient, get this, actually smells like rotting flesh. All right, you intrigued? Well, so is Refine's Malia Karlinski. At first glance, you may not be sure what to make of this. It looks a little like a contorted coconut or maybe a funky fossilized dinosaur egg. 
You may not be familiar with it, but durian is an internet sensation. Oh, it smells like farts now. Oh. Oh my it god. It just smells like wet garbage. It looks kind of pussy. After oh, seeing these reactions, I knew I had to try it. What is this? This is durian. Durian. What is a durian? Durian is the king of fruit. It's a fruit. Yeah. Inside this, because it's super spiky. Super spiky. They say it tastes like heaven, smells like hell. <laughs> Kirkland may be a long way from Southeast Asia, but at Family Run Reunion Cafe, it's the perfect place to get a taste of Malaysia, including a delicate dessert made with durian. And you guys actually make a cake with this, right? Yes, we do. But first, we have to open it up. Yes. Okay. You show me how to do it? Yes. We have our gloves on. So what are you doing, making an X? We'll open it up right now. Slowly. Ready? Holy cow. That's not what I expected at all. <laughs> I can really smell it right now. Wow. Okay. That's this, the inside of a durian. This is the actual durian fruit right here. This is the, this is the fruit right there. Yeah, smell it. Oh! <laughs> the fact it smells like rotting fruit is the first surprise. The next, just how much of it there is. Oh my goodness. So there's fruit on the other side too. Yeah, you probably have about uh, 12 to 15 fruit. And then the moment of truth. It was time to try it. Mm. It's almost like a citrusy smell with a little bit of um, wet sock. And that kind of has the consistency of like um, scrambled eggs or something. Grace Ting is Robert's wife. She's also the baker who transforms the ferocious looking fruit into a delectable dessert. Is this the only place that you can get this cake in the state of Washington? I believe so. Yeah. What do you call it? Uh, during quick cake. Okay, so you take that spiky, crazy looking fruit mm -hmm. and you somehow make it into this delicate cake. Yes. How do you do it? Blend the, the, the durian flesh mm -hmm. and then put it together with the cream. Oh my gosh. That's so delicious. I don't even know what to say it tastes like. There's yeah, nothing it, to it say it tastes like. like uh, for, it will kind of like melt, mm -hmm. soft and kind of cold in your mouth. Those combinations is make just amazing. Plenty of other palate pleasing dishes here. We have the Nonya Laksa, which is more traditionally from Malacca. The Kaya Butter Waffle. This is the version we do it with waffle instead of the toast, uh, brioche toast. This is the hand pulled tea called Te Tare. Te Tare. Yes. And what makes it special? Okay, we pull the tea, it forms the bubble and it creates a, a foam on the top while we're serving it. Creates a foam. Okay, I gotta see this. Okay, let's do it. Whoa. Got to do it approximately about six to seven times. And then pull tea. So Whoa. Tea, how are you foaming right now? Yes. I can't believe it's not overflowing. Nope. <laughs> it's crazy. Don't do it at home. Don't do it at home. Mmm. That's so delicious. Whatever you order at Reunion, a feeling of family is always on the menu. We are friendly people, so they'll feel it. Malia Karlinski, Seattle Refined. To learn more about the durian cake or to see that story again, check out our website. Coming up, things get weird in the kitchen. We are beasting it. Best chef always. Oh, that's that's nice. Our favorite chef shares her secrets for perfect chicken pot pie. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Refined. I'm Guard Swanson. You've probably seen a couple of new faces on Como News lately, including Preston Phillips. Preston has joined the Nightside anchor team, and we were a little curious about him. So Refined decided to get to know him just a little bit better. Clean of Proust in Skagit County. Yeah, look at this. See, they finally cleared this rock slide that came crashing. Como down. anchor Preston Phillips has a fresh perspective on the Pacific Northwest, including Seattle. He savors all the sights and the sounds of the city every single day as he commutes to work via scooter. Riding a scooter, uh, it's just fun because, you know, you can get to work quicker, for one. Uh, at the same time, you don't know who you're going to run into. Since moving here from Arizona, Preston and his family have been exploring. You know, Seattle's a pretty cool place. There are so many layers to it, and that's what we love about the Pacific Northwest, the Science Center and the aquarium and Pike Place and all these wonderful places. Wow, that's exciting. All those Another special place, Como TV, where he anchors the 3.30 and 11 p.m. newscast, as well as reporting breaking news. Every day I like to bring 110%, <clears throat> and when I work with a team that does the same, uh, it's, that, it's that same goal that we all work for. I think for us as journalists, it's very important to be able to tell that story, and I think Como is that place. 
Preston's passion for delivering the news is personal. When you have the opportunity to show the world that miracles are possible and that hope does happen and that recovery happens. He knows from firsthand experience. 17 years ago, Preston's younger brother Cameron was involved in a terrible car crash and suffered a traumatic brain injury. It was the most trying thing we've ever been through um, as a family. A traumatic brain injury can happen to anybody. I looked at life differently. Um, I decided to take four years off and do different things to stay close to home to work with him. Um, during that time, uh, I became a new person. Preston spent years helping his brother recover. Today, Cameron is thriving. Through his recovery, it's taught me and shown me that miracles are possible. He's happy to be a part of the Como family and the community. I can't tell you how much I'm looking forward to all the things that we're going to be doing here at Como. I am pumped. I think that's the word for it. I'm just so excited about what the future days, weeks, months, and years hold here. You can catch Preston Phillips on Como News right after Refine. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the show. I'm Gard Swanson. You know, we cover a lot of food trends here on Refine, and while popular styles of cuisines come and go, there are some dishes that are just classics. Take the chicken pot pie, for instance. It never goes out of style. But as I learned on a recent visit with my BFF, Heather Earnhardt, at the Wandering Goose Cafe, there's pot pie, and then there's loaded pot pie. So Heather, what's the deal here? We've been up here so often. Yeah. I've never seen this many ingredients for anything we've cooked. This is for our pot pie. It's our loaded chicken pot pie. And this recipe is a homemade recipe, right? This is it kind is. of yours. It's mine, and it's um, it's in the cookbook too. All right, okay, let's so get busy. So we're gonna start with uh, butter first. Goes in. Yep. Put that in. We're gonna let that melt. Okay, looks like the butter's melted. We can add onion. This is just a uh, yellow onion or sweet onion. You definitely want to sweat out the onion until it starts getting a little soft and a little transparent, but mm -hmm. not brown. And you also want to add salt and pepper as you go to every layer. So those onions are looking pretty good. Looking good. I think let's add some, we have a one leek chopped up here. Throw them in. Add some celery. Give that a little stir. I'm gonna add the carrots. Time for the potatoes. You can see our vegetables are getting soft. Really soft, man, they really cook down. They cook down. So we're gonna coat our vegetables in the flour. Stir it in there and it starts to cook some. You tell no, me I think, Yeah, I think just hit it with a big, big splash. Is that good? A little bit more, that's good, yep. Add our chicken. Um, no, I roasted a chicken for this and then just took it off the bone. And what's this stuff This is um, chicken stock that we make here. You can see it starts to make this oh, really that nice gravy sauce. That really looks good. This is heavy cream, just a teensy bit. Oh, I need parsley. You want to chop parsley? Yeah. Good job. Dump that in. So we're going to let that come up to a simmer so it'll thicken up properly. And we're going to go make our biscuits. Let's go. So we have some biscuit flour, a little salt, a little baking powder, and baking soda. And then I'm going to add just a teensy touch of sugar. We're going to turn that on. We have um, cold, unsalted butter. And we're going to add some buttermilk. Lightly press it together. If you have a rolling pin, you can use one. Squeeze one more in there. And then we're going to brush that with melted butter. We're going to put this whole thing right Let's in Let's do it. So heavy. <laughs> you got it? Yeah, I got it. And I do it at about 375 for 20, 25 minutes. All right. Ah, oh, look at that. Golden brown. Right? Woo! You ready? All right, dish me up. Ooh, that looks fantastic. Cheers. Woo! Oh, mm. that's fantastic. You're a BCS. <laughs> you're you're a like a baka. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> Best chef always. Oh, Isn't that that's nice? Sweet. Oh, Cheers. Yes, that's uh, this nice. is fantastic. <laughs> For more recipes from Heather, you can check out her cookbook, Big Food, Big Love. All right, that's it for today's show. I'm Gart Swanson. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you next time right back here on Seattle Refined.